It's 6.05 p.m. on the 24th of September, 2024. I've done this video a number of times. Last one was in slow motion, go figure. Satan's trying to hinder, but I will continue and we will get this done. The British Museum Book of Ancient Egypt, very important. Strong's con exhaustive concordance, every word in scripture. The Geneva Bible, 1560. Facsimile Bible with the margin notes from the Protestant authors, giving us understanding, most especially giving us understanding of the Antichrist and the Antichrist system that was established at that time and has continued through till today. And lastly, Scripture of Proper Names. Uh, this book was written in 1804. It was available to these people. They knew how to pronounce these names, and yet the British Museum made a horrible mistake in giving the IAH spelling of Aya to a moon god in Egypt from 600 BC, whose name is Yah. A lot of people want to call on the name Yah. Well, Yah was this guy. Let me show you a picture of Yah. The Rosetta Stone was how they figured out how to pronounce these words in hieroglyphs. The Rosetta Stone was found in the late 1700s and was brought to the British Museum. People had worked on it, and when they finally figured out the different sounds that were involved in the hieroglyphic names of gods, they knew that this particular god of the moon was called Yah. And then they gave him a spelling, I-A-H, which doesn't make any sense because nowhere in the English language is I-A-H pronounced as Yah. It's pronounced as Ayah because I-A-H is on Jeremiah. Jerem, Ayah. Obadiah, Obad, Ayah. I-A-H is always Ayah. Why would they give it to this deity whose name is Yah? And furthermore, when you're calling out to Yah, the moon god is answering you because Yah is not the name that Moses was given. Ayah was the name Moses was given. Let me show you this picture. So hopefully you can see that. That is Aya. Excuse me. That is not Aya. That is Ya. I A H in their spelling. Complete error. 600 BC. Page 65 of this book. This is the Rosetta Stone. These are the three languages they were able to figure out how the um, Egyptian hieroglyphs sounded. And when they put them together, they said, This guy's name is Ya. Oh, we'll spell it I-A-H. Doesn't make any sense at all. But I'm not going to continue in their error. This book proves that I-A-H, at the time they had that knowledge, is pronounced i -ya. This book doesn't even have Aleph He Yod He in it. This is written in the Tanakh, Aleph He Yod He. It's written in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Aleph He Yod He, and it's pronounced Aya because that's the sound on the children's names. Number 627, they shall put my name, Aya, on the children's names. Jerem, Aya, Obad, Aya, Zephah, Aya, all these Aya names. They shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. What's the blessing? That his name will be saved, and they can use his name on that day in Zion, and they can use his name to begin the pure language that he says that he speaks of in Jeremiah in Zephaniah 3 verse 9. He's going to bring to us a pure language. I believe that pure language is happening right now beginning with his name. But I'm not going to confuse that with the British Museum. I'm just going to take it right out of here where James Strong says that I am the verb which means I am which is where we get the idea that his name is the I am is an English word, it wouldn't possibly come from the mouth of Moses, that Aya is the proper pronunciation of his name. And the meaning of that name is I am. But we're not going to call him by the meaning of his name, we're just going to call him by his name, Aya. And we're going to spell that H-A-Y-A-H, -H, because the verb is spelled H-A-Y-A-H. -H. And while the verb is lowercase, this is going to be all uppercase Aya. That should settle it. If there's time to make a new version of scriptures, that's how it's going to be handled. That's how I'm going to handle it if I'm given the ability to do that. But I think we're right.
running out of time. And I don't think that's going to happen. Or if it does happen, it'll be done by the hidden church that, that comes to understand the truth and has to live through the tribulation. So if for anyone, for them, this is how you need to spell it. Avoid all the mistakes in the past and just simply go with Ayah. And respell the names. Jeremiah. J-E-R-E-M. H-A-Y-A-H, so that you know his name is on the children, and that was the blessing that helped people see what to say on that day in Zion, when whosoever called upon the name of the name of Ayah would be saved. So, it's written I-A-H here. They didn't know that. They didn't use that. It was a two-syllable name here. They didn't know that. They didn't use that. They gave the name of the God of creation to the moon god in Egypt. That spelling. But they never pronounced it Ayah. It was always Yah. So, if you're saying God's name is Yah, you're calling on a demon. If you're saying Jesus, it's not Jesus. It's Ayesu. I-E-S-U-S. As in this first English Bible. Not the first, but this English Bible. I-E-S-U-S. I, us, who. The last S is a silent letter. We have words in English that still sound the same, but they're not spelled the same. New and old. Old in this book, O-L-D-E. New in this book, N-E-W-E. They sound exactly the same. We say new, we say old. But we spell them without that E. We're going to change some spellings in the new, pure language. But it's not important what it's spelled like. What's important is whatever characters you use in your alphabet need to produce, when read aloud, the proper sound of his name. In heaven, they know his name. They say his name. It's repeated over and over and over again. They praise him in his name, Aya. Down here, we're still trying to figure it out. But I think we have, because his name is on the children, and we know the sound of those children's names. They've been the same throughout history until... Hebrew was rewritten, and they changed even that. But we know that they're liars and dreamers that run Israel. We know that they've changed the scriptures. Christ said very clearly that they were of their father, the devil. Was he anti-Semitic? He was a Semite. He was a Jew, accusing other Jews of doing bad things with the scriptures. Who's the anti-Semite there? There, there? there is none. It's an internal squabble. But it's a very important squabble because the world will be blessed. All the world will be blessed through Abraham. Through Abraham came the Jewish faith, came the Messiah, and he will come again for those who are his, taking them in the rapture and then returning seven years later. The rapture is the fulfillment of the Feast of Tabernacles. The Son fulfilled Passover, the Spirit fulfilled Pentecost, the Father will fulfill Tabernacles, the Shalosh Regalim. The three feasts that are one feast, one Shalosh Regalim. The three entities of God that are one God, Shema Israel, our God is one God, united. Only something that is originally separate can be united. That one God is three things together as God. We're running out of time. Tabernacles is almost here. It's 2024. Israel's about to be surrounded in armies, and Christ says, look up, your redemption draws nigh. I don't know how much time I have to finish this video. I hope I'm getting it all. But the bottom line is, it's a new language, it's a pure language, and we need to start looking at it that way. Come and learn it, apply it, and be raptured as a wise virgin, receiving the, the promise that these bodies, these temporary bodies, will be made permanent and take care.